Hi everybody, welcome back to your Daily Dose at Home. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the Visitor Engagement Team here at the Calgary Zoo. Today I am standing at the Savannah Yard, one of the incredible mixed species habitats here at the Calgary Zoo. And today we're going to explore a little bit of the science and thought process that goes into creating a mixed species habitat. Today on your Daily Dose, you got to see one of the first days this year that the giraffes joined the savanna yard, including the Hartman's Mountain Zebras, Ostriches, African Crown Cranes, and a few other wild residents like Canada Geese who call the savanna yard home. Savanna yard is a very interesting and complex habitat because at any point in time, it can actually house anywhere from one to the full four different species. Some other ones you might have thought of are the Rocky Mountain Aviary, which is home to different species of owl, other birds of prey, as well as pond turtles, or the Rainforest Aviary, which has many different species of birds. There are also habitats that can be mixed species depending on what is going on or what interactions. So sometimes we'll see our gorilla troop and our colobus troop sharing the same space. So what are the considerations that our zookeeping teams are having to make for these mixed species habitats? First of all, we need to house animals together that have similar climate needs. So everything that shares the savanna yard, at least at one time, is enjoying the same climate. That's why we only see the giraffes in this yard in the summertime, because in the winter it is too cold for the giraffes and the ground with snow is too slippery and unstable. But if lots of folks come to us in the winter and they go, wait a second, why are there zebras outside in the snow? We have Hartman's Mountain Zebras here at the Calgary Zoo, which are a more cold weather tolerant species of zebra because they are native to high altitude climates. The zebras will always have indoor outdoor access when it is cold and chilly, but often in the winter time we'll see Leva, Chela and uh, Senna, our current occupants, or uh, Comas and Eros, our others, as, our males as well, enjoying the savanna yard in the winter. The ostriches and the crowned cranes are also a little bit more of a seasonal occupant. Uh, so whoever's in this habitat varies throughout the year. The other thing we need to consider are species that go well together. So we don't put predators like the lions in the savanna yard uh, because putting predators and prey in the same habitat is not a good idea. Now we can put carnivorous animals in a habitat with species they don't eat. So in the Rocky Mountain aviary, you'll see birds of prey like the owls in with animals like pond turtle, because even though the birds of prey are carnivores, they don't eat turtles. Mixed species habitats are also a really amazing opportunity for us as people to understand ecosystems. When we look out into the savanna yard, we see some of the complexity that goes into a savanna habitat. We have the plants, different kinds. We have grasses, we have trees. Different species will eat those, like the giraffes and the zebras. And then across the way, we have the lions. So being able to see all of these species interact in that natural way is a really amazing educational opportunity for us as people. We also want to make sure we put animals that aren't too territorial. So animals like the hippopotamus have their own habitat because hippos are very territorial as well as they are semi-aquatic. So they have very different needs throughout their day than this big piece of grassland and pasture. So the hippos have their own sunny beach and their own space separate from the savanna yard. The other thing we often are looking at are species that are going to either get along or just kind of tolerate and ignore each other. So in the savanna yard, we have two different species of what we call hoofstock, which are the giraffe and zebra, as well as some birds. And each of these species spends their day doing different things. The zebra will often be grazing on the grass in the pasture, whereas the giraffe love to nibble at all of the leaves or in the tall feeder that's behind me. So what that means is they occupy a different niche. We use niche to mean a different place in their ecology. And that's the same as it would be in the wild on the savanna. Uh, so we see those different variations in what each animal is doing. That means they're not competing with each other for access to the same space. Now our keeper team is always looking at different dynamics that are happening inside a mixed species habitat to make sure everything is comfortable and smooth and make any adjustments as they need to. The other reason that we might house different species together is actually for enrichment. So it's really great for the giraffes and the uh, zebras, ostriches and crown cranes to have those interactions that would be typical in the wild as well. So for each of these species, being in a mixed species habitat is quite normal. Thank you so much for watching today's Daily Dose at Home and exploring some of these incredible mixed species habitats here at the Calgary Zoo. 
Today you get to test your knowledge and see if you can put together a habitat with some species that should go together. Click the activity PDF and thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for supporting wildlife conservation and we'll catch you next time.